Hi everybody, big welcome to CDH TV gameplay. This time me and Pontus are joined by William and Snuske. Hello. Hello. So not too long ago, someone showed me Otari and I, I kind of thought it was a joke, but it's been doing pretty well in testing. In like, it's kind of like Winota, at least when it comes to a lot of the payoff creatures, but it doesn't run a lot of the quote unquote bad creatures that you have to run in Winota. And it, it kills people a lot faster than I expected it to. And it gets to run more fun creatures, quote unquote, like, that you wouldn't normally see, or at least more oppressive creatures. Like, like the new Karlak is pretty good in this deck as well. It's very aggressive. So today I'm playing an objectively bad deck because I don't have red in it, so I can't cast Dockside or Breach, which is unfortunate. But we'll make do with Sir the Enchanter. It's like old school commanders, right? You get your Necropotence and then the deck is kind of set up to take advantage of Necropotence as best as you can in these colors. With Born Upon a Wind, you are basically better than Sir has ever been, ending with Atasas, hopefully. Ah, Sir, that's so 2015. This is 2024, and we have a new Necro, and a new Necro boss, and that's Cisei Red Light Captain. So the new Necro, Necro Dominance, isn't actually out yet. So I'm using Doomsday as a stand-in. So Doomsday is not in the deck, it is Necro Dominance instead. And it's a legendary Necropotence that CC can literally tutor for. So now we have a secondary Necro Commander, you could say. Now, I want to emphasize a very important part that Sur has been out for quite a while and the concept of how to Necro with Sur has been kind of figured out. And this is like a work in progress, you could say. It is a bit of a mix where we have the typical, kind of typical CC stuff that you normally see CC doing together with a attempt to mix in Necro inside that. And there will be some tweaks to make it kind of work better over time, but of course we have Bone Upon the Wind, we have Final Fortune, and we have Teferi that can also make Sorceress being instant speed costed, which allows my Demonic Tutor to be costed in instant speed. It's something. So today I'm bringing back Heliod, uh, the Radiant Dawn, the Flip Heliod, that you can get Flash and Construction Direction on. The main game plan of the deck is to land the Heliod and flip them, and then have my opponent draw a bunch of cards, e either through me wheeling them or just by them playing the game. And then I use the cost reduction to storm off in instant speed, hopefully in response to someone else doing something back to all. Yeah, so this hand is just a snap keep. It's not perfect, but it is really good. Yeah, turn two Heliod plus flip with one man over. And we don't have a hard payoff in our hands, but but they can both find good cards. We don't really have the the any extra blue mana left unless we draw into something amazing. I wouldn't bet on that happening, but we could hopefully draw into some hopefully like maybe Mons Necro Dominances. Necro, no, Necro Dominance? Nec, nec, yeah, that, that thingy. And I get to search for the free expel. That would be pretty boggers. But yeah, uh, flipping turns, flipping Heliod turn one is always or turn two is always nice, and we do have some puffs. So yeah, this is just a good hand. Yeah, keeping for seven. Let's go. This hand is a little bit off. We aren't having the perfect mana base. I don't like having Tefer in my hand. I do like having Sika in my hand, but uh, it's gonna be a turn two Sika, then a turn three Orcish Bowmaster. I it's not terrible, but this is something I would keep on a five. So I'm going to be greedy and Mulligan. And a turn to Esper Sentinel. It is once again Teferi in the opening hand. Italian in the opening hand though. Code of Calling finds Dockside. It is lacking speed. I think I'm going to Mulligan once more. Going down to six. This looks pretty good. We have Demonic Tutor. And we have Bone Upon the Wind already in the hand. We have a turn one Dork. We have three lands. I don't think we're going to need three lands. I rather keep a land. I'm going to keep this. That's a certain. Do I keep Mindbreak Trap or a land? I think the answer is that I do keep the Mindbreak Trap because we are probably going to draw into a land anyway. And with the Dork, we should be setting up to have enough mana for the start of the game anyway. We could turn two for Necro and then hope, depending on what we draw into, we could uh, try to go for Necro on turn three. In the end, I'm keeping this. I'm going to send Taiga to the bottom of my, my library. There's some potential here. We have a turn one windfall, 
there is an option as well we can do turn to wrist stick i kind of like that i i think this is just like as good as it gets in sir in esper colors so yeah i'm gonna keep this <laughs> take it away it's get like a turn one deafening silence against this lineup is good unless it's Cisse. It doesn't really have any mana acceleration, which is kind of annoying. It does have the Galatriel's Dispissal to at least remove Cisse from the equation early on, along with the Source to Plowshares, but it's not really that aggressive. It has the Soulless Jailer. I don't know how relevant that is against these decks. I don't think it's that relevant at all, actually. It's, like, it's a promising first seven, but being a first seven, I would love to find some better aggression. I think it's mostly because Cisse's in the pod. It, it just ends up accumulating too much value especially against these two deck other decks i'm not sure how well they can combat it with the lack of mana acceleration i think i'm just gonna try and go for a second seven here since it's this early in the mulligan right, we have the jewel lotus we've got two lands we have a, an early pyro and a paladin class that's more of a protective piece and also later pump yeah i think i'll keep this second seven we'll see how it goes this is the first time in the deck so sometimes you just gotta try the early hands to see where it leads i'll start off draw a card Land for turn would be a command tower. I will tap it for a Sol Ring. I'll tap Sol Ring for a Mana Vault. And then I will pass turn. Draw a card. Verdant Catacomb. Sacrifice that. Finding a Savanna, tapping it for green. Using that to cause an ignoble hierarch and passing the turn. Draw for turn. Play this Scalding Tarn. Pass my turn there. I'll draw for turn. Oh, that fixes a lot of problems. Gonna play and crack a Bloodstained Mire. Find a Plateau. And I'm gonna cast a Jeweled Lotus. With all this dark side feeding, I think it's all right as long as we follow it up with a Graph Digger's Cage. If it's in hand, then whatever. If not, good luck trying to search it out, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and that's where I'll leave it. I'll pass turn. You do know that I'm literally the only, except you, the only one who actually has a dark side here, right? I am very aware. I am very aware of that. Go to my turn. Iron Mesa, land return. I will fetch. Finding a Tundra, tapping four to cast my commander, Heliod. Heliod will it be? I'll not target anything because I can't. And then I will pay three and two life to turn him over. And with the flip Heliod in play, I will pass turn. I'm going to draw a card. So it's kind of funny how Snusky was uh, saying how hard it's going to be to find Dockside. Now that Graft Degree's Cage is in play, well, you can just be lucky and draw into it. Now if I cast Dockside, I will generate four treasures and one land, which means I have exactly mana enough to Cast Demonic Tutor, cast Necropotence, and uh, activate Necropotence and gain. Um, I can't win, really, though, because the big problem is that I will be tapped out, and I will not really have enough fast mana inside the deck to be able to cast Born Upon the Wind. But we would be setting up for next turn, quite clearly. What we could do is basically empty hand here by casting Dockside, casting Tutor, play a land. We will be down to three cards. And then use Necro a tiny bit to fuel up the hand a bit. Which is actually kind of good. It is going to, however, set up to make my opponents be ready to deal with me quite easily, though. That's a problem. But we... Like, a early, like the only creature that's actually going to punch us is a four creature. That's uh, Heliod. The other option is to play Isika God of the Tree. And hold back the Dockside. And try to explode next turn. If there's more mana in play, then I win next turn with more. That's actually a good argument. If I do nothing, if I just put Ezekiel in play and land, hold up my Mind Break Trap and be ready, I could potentially win more of the, out of the blue with a surprise effect. They're gonna be less... They're gonna. If I put the Necro in play, I will become the target. If I don't, I don't become the target and I become more of the surprise. Uh, I kind of really want to put the Necro in play just value engine with it. Uh, that's also an argument. Even if I don't really use it to... To be, to be a threat. I mean, drawing cards is still kind of good. And it feels like Pontus is going to pop. I only have one Mind Break Trap. In my experience, you kind of need more once Pontus has started going. Because Mind Break Trap comes in later. You know what? In the end, I think I'm going to need Counter Spells. So I'm going to put a Necro in play. Increase my hand size up to 7. And stay safe. Having it as a value engine. And as a combo piece for next turn. It will put kind of put a target on my head. And I can see an argument for being more greedy with the Dockside. But yeah. We're going with the Necro. Yeah, yeah, hey, I called it. You saw this one. Here you go. I called Snuska. it. Ah, yeah, I felt it in my, I felt it in my veins. <laughs> Dog side. Just talk like that. Yeah, I did. So I calculated incorrect. Apparently that the healer is an enchantment as well. So I will be getting five treasures. 
I'm gonna play this Bloodstain Mire, sacrifice that. I'm gonna find an Underground Sea, and then I'm gonna use one Treasure and the Underground Sea to cast a Demonic Tutor. I'm going to find Necropotence and pay three Treasures to keep one staying up in float and cast the Necropotence. And Mind Break Trap is alive. In response to your Necropotence, I will cast a Loot Spell. Uh, then, still in response to Necropotence, I'll crack my Loot Spell to cast a Merchant Scroll. Merchant Scroll resolves, finding this Mind Break Trap and then casting it, targeting the Necropotence. That is a Lotus Petal, Merchant Scroll and Mind Break Trap. You have activated my trap card. I'm casting my Mind Break Trap on your Mind Break Trap. <laughs> I protected my Necropotence, but I'm honestly a little bit sad of losing my Mind Break Trap because I might need it. Now, one important thing, or a big difference between Necropotence and Necrodominance is that Necrodominance is actually drawing cards and Necropotence is putting cards into the hand. So I won't be fueling Heliod when I'm putting card or activating this thing. Now I have two cards in my hand. I'm going to play safe and just pay five life into this one. In response to the Necro Triggers on the stack, I would like to avoid a mental misstep by fetching Underground Sea and casting this Vampiric Tutor. I'm gonna get this card and I'm gonna put it on the top of my deck. Then Necro Resolves, I will draw seven. And I will, after drawing up to seven, I will pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw my funny card that I tutor for. Play this Mana Crypt. I'm gonna follow it up by casting this Imposter Mech that I did it for, because apparently I don't have Fimish. So Imposter Mech is gonna make a copy of the Dockside Extortionist, except it's a vehicle. Use one of the treasures to cast this Silence. We had Mind Break Traps. <laughs> no, not anymore. Pass. I'm going to exile a Simian Spirit Guide, sacrifice this treasure, and cast a Bone Upon a Wind. This might draw a mental, I hope. I will draw a mental misstep! Uh, funny, that's uh, not a mental misstep. <laughs> I, I have no response to this, but uh, I guess I should cast this still imprinting this Gemstone Caverns. Oh, wait a minute. If he is going to cast another flicker effect... Nah, better not do this. I'm not gonna feed the Dockside anymore. Very cool, very cool. Silence resolves. I am protected. I feel good. I'm gonna continue by casting this Necropotence that I drew. All right, it's YOLO time. We're gonna do, see what Esper can do with the Necropotence, and we're gonna do minus 35, I believe, and go to two life. I would like to pay two treasures. I would like to cast this Born Upon a Wind that I drew. Cast this Mox Diamond, discarding this Scrubland. I'm gonna hold priority on the Exile trigger from Necro. I'm gonna cast this Lotus Petal, cast this Jewel Lotus, and hold priority on the Jewel Lotus. I'm gonna cast this Offer You Can't Refuse, targeting my Jewel Lotus. I go up to three treasures. This going to my graveyard. Sack a treasure, sack this Lotus Petal to cast this Cabal Ritual, beginning five black with threshold. Use one of the treasures to cast a Shane of Vapor, targeting my imposter mech. Shane of Vapor resolves, bouncing my imposter mech. I'm going to sacrifice a land, target the uh, Graph Digger's Cage on Snesky's board. I think the only perhaps saving grace here is the that I sacrifice this plateau, target the dark side from Mons? Uh, yeah, so uh, Snuska's copy targets the dark side. I am gonna respond to the copy of Shane Vapor by sacking a treasure, using one of the floating black and casting my imposter mech, floating three black. Oh, well, I already lost my land on my Graph Digger's cage, so I'm sacking this Jewel Lotus. I am honestly impressed. I would do the same if I could right now, just to join the team. I approve this. I admire your fighting spirit, Snuske. Uh, I still get four treasures though. I uh, go up to four treasures. I'm gonna do kind of a clunky line. Using one of the treasures and my three black, I am gonna cast this Besiege the Mirror, sacrificing my Mana Crypt as bargain. Uh, Besiege is gonna find this Yagmas Will. Yagmas Will will resolve and go put itself into exile. I am gonna recast this Mana Crypt from my graveyard. Float one colorless, use one treasure. I'm gonna cast this Cabal Ritual from my graveyard with Threshold. I'm gonna get 
five more black from my graveyard recast this besiege going down to two black sacrificing this mana crypt as bargain to besiege the mirror my besiege the mirror is gonna find this thassa's oracle and if that resolves i have a thassa city be i am gonna hold priority on that and use this calling the week to sacrifice thassa's it goes to exile calling the week resolves i'm gonna go up to five black i'm gonna sacrifice one treasure cast this mystical tutor mystical tutor resolves it will find a tinted pact put that card on top of my library i'm gonna sacrifice the last treasure use one black to recast the born upon a wind from my graveyard born upon a wind resolves i'm gonna draw the card that i put on the top of my library use Two black, cast it in a pack, exile my library, and then let my process or code trigger result. GG's. Yeah. GG's. Moral of the story. Play Necropotence. It's a very good card. You should put it in your deck. I Actually, agree. every deck that can play it. No, it, I play Boros. Put it, in put it in the Boros decks too. Let them tell you you're wrong. And yeah. then say no. Oh yeah, I can, <laughs> I can just rule zero it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the moral of the story no. is Dockside is good. And uh, mm. cloning Dockside is good. Yeah, casting Graph Tigger's Kitch and then having your opponents just draw a dark side, really good. Really good. <laughs> Deciding to cast the extra artifact to stop the tutor for dark side into play and then just have that end up feeding the dark side instead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. it turns out I didn't even get a turn two, so who cares? <laughs> you got the cast Another axe, though. Okay. This is what the deck does, right? I got to put three permanents into play and then end up with zero permanents in play. That was great. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that's, that was... Um, your, your starting board state feed the Dockside, and then you try to remove your entire board state to not feed Dockside in the lay, yeah. And then it didn't matter anyway. Yeah. I love to see it though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I should yeah. have emphasized, Pontus, that I was just going to value engine this turn with my mind break trap, but I guess you would have still mind break trapped it anyway, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, the problem is that you valuing just wins you next turn instead, and I don't have removal for it, so like you have to counter it or yeah. just lose. And like, sure, William could have exactly Vab Tutor for Dockside into Necro, into Drawing Born, but that's not really the, the if, case I'm going to assume from a land pass. I have a question of, then, though. Of, mm -hmm. If I yeah. would have, when you have Merchant Scroll in the stack, if I reveal the Mind Break Trap and I say, I will protect my Necro if you do this, would you still have made me consume my mind break trap? Yeah, but that but that's not because it's correct. That's just because I hate people doing that. <laughs> I see. I mean, I was I was thinking the correct play would be to get either something else or hold back. But I would one hundred percent do the same thing. It's like cool, one less counter spell. Let's do let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, we run into the scenario where suddenly we empty the counter spells versus everyone else. I can see your point, reducing the amount of counter spells, but it doesn't really affect my win chance in the end. I also just have win on if I get on tap, by the way. But I would have uh, cast a paladin class on my turn. <laughs> Oof. Oof. <laughs> yeah, but, but like mm. I, I have two to wheel in my hand, so like if I just get on tap, I have that. Wait a minute, I just realized. Uh, if, 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 if if you ever draw three cards, I have that in instant speed, but you'd never did. Or well you did under silence, which doesn't really help me. Realize. Yeah. That's it for us. Fast and Furious match. Hope you enjoyed it anyways. Take care guys and we'll be back next week as always.